Hey guys, it's Superior and welcome to C++ tutorial number 30. In this tutorial we're just going to be looking at something called uh, inline functions. Um, uh, you might notice something different as well. The screen saver has changed. I mean, okay, maybe that's not so different. Normally I change it quite often. But um, I have reinstalled Windows Vista but I've updated to the 64-bit version so I can take advantage of the full 4 gigabytes of uh, RAM I have. Um, so hopefully, um, I mean, I did it mainly because when I was playing games, you know, it would just, it would freeze up. And it only happened when I played games, and sometimes it would happen really early in, and it just got on my nerves. And the only thing I can think of is that it was because I had uh, low RAM, so, uh, and that's because uh, on 32-bit, um, if I install 4 gigs, I only get 2.8, whereas in um, 64, I, if I install 4, I get, you know, 3.8 to 4 gigs, so, you know, pretty much what I paid for. Um, so, yeah, um, I hopefully everything's back to normal, though, I, I've spent pretty much, you know, a whole morning, you know, the morning I installed it, I spent the whole morning getting everything back to normal, um, and so, yeah, let's take a look at the code then, I guess, um, so, again, basic, um, basic setup, as you can see, uh, we'll just use, including the iostream, stream, no strings today, and the main function. And let's take a look at this uh, function declaration. We are declaring a function which returns a float called float division, and it takes uh, a float called num1 and a float called divide by. Okay. Uh, in the function definition, we can see it all it return all it does is return num1 divided by the divide by variable. Okay. Um, now let's take a look at the main function. Um, and actually, I'm just going to take this away quickly. Um, what you'll find is that with a function... Sorry, before I talk about this, um, what, you, what everyone needs to understand is that uh, when you call a function in C++ that's not in line, what happens is the compiler, um, when it's making the executable, it says, OK, function. Now I've got to skip to the function definition because uh, I need to run that function. So actually, what we've got is this function definition. Um, whenever it's whenever it's called in the main function, or well, whenever it's called, um, what happens is the code execution skips to the function definition. Okay. Um, now, um, what actually happens is we find there's a performance overhead that we uh, we lose some performance in the um, work that's done to go from here in the program to skip to here in the program. Okay, um, now we can do something about this simply by making the function inline. And to do this, um, we simply type the keyword inline at the start of the function, like like this. Okay, and that will make it in an inline function. So now, what does an inline function actually mean? Well, basically, rather than skipping from here in the program to here in the program, what the inline keyword does is it says, okay, whenever the function is called, don't skip down to where the function definition is. Um, instead, copy the function definition, basically copy uh, the function definition into wherever the function has been called from. Okay, so with a function like this, it's only one line long. That... Um, that uh, should, and in fact it does, uh, reduce the, uh, well it increases, sorry, the performance, so it increases the speed of our program, because um, the overhead required to go from here to here is actually more than it is to re required to copy this line into where the function is called, okay? Um, now there's one problem. Well, there's there's more than one problem. There's several problems with because inline copies it. If you've got more than you know, say, four or five function calls, you're going to end up 
um, using up a lot more performance because every time you call that function, um, it's being copied. And so if you use if you call it more than four or five times, um, what's going to happen is it's going to start um, being more uh, performance heavy because you're going to need to copy it more and more. So it would be worth just leaving out the inline and letting it jump from here to here. Okay, uh, so that's basically where you've got to draw the line yourself. You've got to figure that out, really. Um, what's important to know is that modern modern compilers like Visual C++ and Dev C++ and CodeBlocks and all those, um, most of the time, uh, they'll you know these compilers they're really good and they'll you know t really scrutinize your code. And if they feel if the compiler feels that a function could do with being in line, it will probably make that adjustment. Um, which is actually it's a um, function sorry compilers do a lot of this sort of behind the scenes stuff without you knowing um, so you'll find if we left out the inline here what would actually happen is because this is only being called once and it's such a short function um, the compiler will probably make this an inline function uh, by itself um, if not, it will find another more um, less sorry less performance hard way of um, calling this function. Okay, so modern compilers, you know, you can trust them; they're pretty damn good. Um, also, um, apparently, if you label a function as inline, but a compiler um, thinks it's a bit too hefty to be an inline function, it may in fact D inline it, if that's even a word. Um, so make the function non inline. Um, and that's just because that's what the compiler feels. It feels the function is too big to be an inline function. So it's worth skipping from this place to that place, like a normal function would do, then copying all that code in. Okay? So really, you probably won't be using the inline keyword a lot. Um, except if we want to uh, replace like a macro function or but that's better done with templates but uh, we'll talk about that in a, a while it's it's not going to be soon that we'll look over that so um, no need to worry about that yet but um, that's inline functions really um, so just remember those limits um, next tutorial we're going to be looking at um, I think we're going to be doing recursion, so uh, that's a pretty cool subject in uh, programming. So uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Over and out.